Hi there. Traveling Things in association with Rugged Wear, real people, real clothing, real solutions present In Conversation With. I'm your host, David Batsoffen, and today we're talking to the real Sophia Lindop. <laughs> Sophia, how are you doing? I'm really good. Thank you, David. <laughs> Do I'm doing well. It's so lovely to see your face. Are you well? I am indeed. Thank you. I love the hair. I really enjoy yours. Thank you. <laughs> obviously, obviously. No, thank you, David. It's a little bit wild. The Lebanese, the Lebanese cool, but I love it too. It's easy. Thank you. Thanks is for the compliment. New look for 2022 or has this been for some time? Because you and I haven't spoken for a while. Mm, I think there's going to be a bit of a newer look. Um, <laughs> my darling husband says it used to be a little bit more edgy. So mm. I'm going to try and find edgy and make it happen on my hair. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. The last time you and I chatted was about your then uh, newest or latest cookbook. But I don't want to talk to you about that today. I want to talk to you about the Sophia or the SL range of kitchen stuff that you that you put together yes. uh, in 2021 and obviously it'll it'll not only uh, continue into 2022 but it will be enlarged upon mm. david for me boredom is such a bad thing really so the first the first three months of that hard lockdown yeah was wonderful i was in like in heaven it was lovely to be with paddy you know, we had wonderful times. We'd see emergency patients in the morning and then we'd work in the garden and paint. And then I got bored. <laughs> and, uh, and I started to think, um, I realized that COVID wasn't just going to be, you know, a couple of months. I realized that it was an epidemic and that we had to change how we do business. Right. And um, so suddenly I thought, well, I better jump on the um, bandwagon of um, e-commerce, mm. you know? So I, I've always, I've got a couple of things I love. I love design. I love things that are well-designed and that work. I'm totally tickled by those. And for that reason, the Italians are um, for me such an example. Then the other thing that I love is I love creating and I love business. And, um, you know, I guess it's in my genes, the Phoenician genes that are, <laughs> that are there alive and kicking. I love, I love the whole thing of selling and, and business and figuring things out. So for my sins, I got bored and I started drawing little things and decided mm, this would be nice and this would work perfectly and this would fit into a specific space and, right. and, and. And I designed a range of ceramics, uh, first of all, that would complement my Lebanese cookery classes. Um, things like a laban pot to make yogurt mm -hmm. and an olive, um, uh, olive oil dispenser that takes bulk olive oil, not 500 liters, but like a liter and a half. You know, and a salt pig and a utensil holder and and in my little mind, I thought I would sell a couple and, you know, and I'd continue with my cookery classes. And then I also did a couple of um, linen pieces with a beautiful photography that was done by Hein Fenica. Uh, mm. He is going to kill me if he watches this. <laughs> yeah. Just hang on. Hein van Tonde. I'm going to send him um, a copy. <laughs> please, David. Please. Oh, gosh. Anyway. And um, I did some beautiful photography of Lebanon and of Lebanese food. So I put that on tea towels and I started an e-commerce website and thought, okay, we're in business. And um, I had to find ceramicists who would make the specific mm. um, shapes. That was hard. Um, People would just say, this can't work. And I said, it can, obviously it can. And I, I finally found someone and um, started an e-commerce site and then realized that you can't open a shop if you don't know how everything works. So I went on this learning curve about e-commerce sites and 
um, the back end and how to, you know, make changes myself and all those things that might seem simple to other people, but, you know, it's not what I do. It's not in the realm of, of what I do every day. So it was a huge learning curve and one I absolutely loved, absolutely loved setting it up. And then kicked off the shop and thought, okay, I'll sell a couple of little things and life will go on and had no idea of what was coming <laughs> at all. It is actually, it has um, mushroomed to such a degree that my ceramicist that I started out with cannot cope anymore. And I've just moved to uh, one of South Africa's biggest ceramicists and he's going to be taking over my, my work. So it's exciting. It's very exciting. And I discovered, you know, I've, in my life, I've done a lot of sales work and I, I love selling. I, I love reading the market. I love, um, you know, for me, selling is identifying a need and then a solution and bringing them together. So, and also I think people in lockdown wanted pretty things because yeah. life around them was so unpretty. And so um, I supplied that. And so it's now boomeranged into a whole <laughs> range of products, including wooden boards and all kinds of things. And there's more to come this year. So it's been very exciting for me, it really has. I remember when I was waiting for your last book to review so that you and I could chat and a parcel arrived. And I said to my wife, the book is here. And while I was talking, I thought, this package feels very soft. How does this feel? <laughs> this is a soft, soft cover book. One that, you know, that, do you remember those linen books that you used to give children to play? Oh, yes. I thought yes, it was, that you can put in I, the washing. There you go. And I opened the package with a bit of trepidation, I have to say. And it was one of your aprons, um, mm. which, which my wife immediately usurped and went, well, this is very nice. This will work for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think I'll have to send another one so that you can have <laughs> twinsies in the kitchen. So how did, did, did you speak to friends or did you, as you were saying, did you just read the demographic and say, okay, so people need chopping boards constantly. I know uh, one that we had has just fallen apart. So looking to replace that now. Things like rolling pins, do people still use rolling pins anymore? Mm -hmm. Really? They very much do. They very much do. There was also a movement um, during COVID for people to go back into their kitchens mm. and spend a lot of time in their kitchens. And right. that's why I did the e-cookbooks initially, because yeah. I thought, take me into your kitchen with you. And um, so there's definitely, I, I love to look around and I think I have a pretty good feeling of, of what works and what doesn't. Right. And, um, and I think I just went out from the place of, I want to give people something pretty in their kitchen that would remind them of me and that would encourage them to cook more and be in the kitchen more because it is really the heart and soul of the home. Of and I was so, yes, I was so encouraged by the fact that people were moving back into their kitchens and cooking together. And so I wanted to compliment that. And I didn't really know how it would go or what would yeah. work and what wouldn't. So when do we get the cardboard cutout of Sophia that will stand in the kitchen and administering uh, or administering cooking tips? Put a little beside that, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there'll be such a thing, David. I was um I was in um Douglas recently, um, in the hometown where I grew up, and I went to say goodbye to yeah. some people I knew I wouldn't see again. And one of them said, um, but you just you just stole Sophia, you just mm -hmm. stole yourself. And I will always be that. I'll not be a, a cardboard cutout. So I'm sorry. I can make one for you if you miss me and think you want, but I will not be a cardboard cutout. Before I talk to you about your recent trip and going home to say goodbye, because I did that two years ago in Port Elizabeth, and it's mm -hmm. it's cathartic in a way. But I just yes. want to ask you, you talk about people going back into their kitchens during lockdown. Mm. Why banana bread and sourdough? Sure, I can see it by the look on your 
and Dalgona coffee. If I saw another <laughs> thing of Dalgona coffee, when we were little, my mom used to have Frisco coffee, which was that fine powder. Yeah. And I don't know how we figured out, but we used to put Frisco in the cup with mm -hmm. sugar yeah. and two teaspoons of water. And you, we used to like beat it and it became thick and yellow. And then we'd pour the boiling water in mm -hmm. and it would make this foam. So when they started with Dalgona, I think it was Dalgona coffee or whatever, I thought, oh, I've been doing that since birth, you know, seriously. <laughs> no, it, I'm not sure. I think, you know, we are, as humans, we are sheep, really, <laughs> which, which I always think is the worst compliment, the yeah. worst compliment, because sheep can be quite tough. But if one, I think it's a competitive nature of my banana bread is better than yours and whatever. So I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm so I'm just glad that that it's over with, um, and that hopefully, when things return to, when things return to some sort of normalcy, whatever the new the new normal might be, yeah, is that, whatever that is, uh, banana bread and sourdough will be banned. You know, no, look, it's still two of my favorite things. I just don't want to see it on Instagram all the time. Bless my wife; she became a very good baker, but. She'd start off, she'd bring me like banana bread and, and I go, this is delicious. And then a week later, she makes another one and goes, I've changed the recipe. And I go, why? Last, no, it's, when it's not better. Don't add stuff. If it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. Um, so yeah. just leave it as it is. I'm happy with what, with what you brought me last week. Make me date oh, loaf. That's what I really like. Forget the banana bread. But I think- Date loaf, you like that. I love that. I, as a child at, at home in PE, um, I remember saying to my parents, are you going out this evening? And they'd go, no. And I'd go, please go out. Because then the our then domestic and I would get into the kitchen and we'd bake. Oh, bake oh stunning. Yeah, it didn't, it sometimes lovely. Didn't, didn't last until my parents got home because Hannah and I normally ate the majority of it as soon as There's nothing ate. like warm date loaf with butter on it. Nothing, nothing. The other one, and I don't know whether it's still, whether it's still made, was a thing called a Boston loaf, which you find yes, in stores, which is also a sort of a date loaf -y thing, but it was like a Swiss roll with dates in it. Yes. Yeah. I must say, I haven't seen one for ages, but I know the name. I'm now going to go and look for one. because David. <laughs> Let's start an, an Instagram revolution. Boston <laughs> Rolls. Boston Come, Rolls. <laughs> let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Talk to me about your recent visit back to, to where you were born and what it was like going back, saying goodbye, maybe seeing, as you said, seeing some of the people for um, maybe the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, I feel like... Um, there's a theme in my life currently, and I guess it's part of, of growing older. Um, you know, going to Lebanon and finding my family, going mm. home to Lebanon, which was what my book was all about, was such a happy, um, healing moment. And um, I was born in this tiny village in South Africa. Um, there was a small Lebanese community. We were all like family. It is where my great grandfather um, and his brother, his young brother, they were in their twenties. They landed, I think it was 1871. Um, they came for the diamonds. Um, the brother started a tea room and a little store as us Lebanese people do and Jewish people. <laughs> and, um, and my great great grandfather um, got hold of a piece of land and started mining for diamonds, and that that's our story. And at, on that land, my grandfather was born and spent the first short time of his life before they went back to Lebanon to say goodbye to family. And then the war broke out, so he grew up in Lebanon. But then they came back, and and I think they that made it was home for them, and that's. You know, my whole history is encapsulated in that village, the houses, the um, medical practices, the everything is in that village. And when my father died, because I was, my brother asked me the other day, why were you so rebellious? But I was, 
I don't know if it's a middle child thing. So <laughs> I was telling just, him. As a middle child, you just get ignored. Yeah, that's probably why I was rebellious. Like, look at me. <laughs> I remember there was a, a time when my teachers called my mom. My, my hair was here and it was just too short to pull back and make a ponytail. And they said, well, either she has to make a ponytail or cut this. So I said to my mom, I got this. I'll go to the hairdresser. <laughs> and I had my hair cut in an afro. <laughs> so I went to school. I'm sitting on my standard seven, which is great, whatever. Um, pictures with my tennis racket and my afro and all these beautiful little Afrikaans girls. So I don't know why I was so rebellious, but I was. So I left early on. I left in my um, around 16th year, I went to boarding school and then I just kept going. Mm. But it was always home. I always would say, even when I was married, I'd say to Patty, let's go home for Christmas. You right. know, it, it remains home. Um, when my dad remarried after my mom passed away, my bedroom was ironically turned into a new kitchen. So it was like it was like a good um, progression. Yeah. And it remained home. And so my brother recently, after my dad's passing, he sold the farm. We had a chat around it and I agreed with his decision and it was sold and he's moving in a month and I had to go and say goodbye. I believe in, in starting and finishing things. It, mm. it is a very powerful cycle in, you know, closing a chapter and not, yeah. I don't like to drag baggage from one chapter of a book into another. So I, I went to do that and it was actually, um, quite a bit easier than I thought you know you you have a life elsewhere but the the thing is my brother and I were talking it's not so much the village now it's the memories of how it was and how we grew up and that is no longer there so in a way that was easier to go to move away from mm -hmm. but I one of the things I wanted to do is just go to the cemetery which is not a morbid fascination of mine but I wanted to record everybody's date of birth, date of death, um, remember things because mm. I'm also busy putting together a family tree and it's important for me to know, to know yeah. all of this. So I was, I remember, I said to my brother, just leave me here for a while. And I, I stood there and I realized that my entire family tree is at my feet, you know, from... Yeah. My great grandfather, great grandmother, all their children, all their husbands and wives, my, you know, everybody, mm. they were just there at my feet. And I, I talked to them. I thought, you know, here I am for the last time. You're staring back at me through your, your, the stones on your tombs. And, and I want to honor you for mm. a new life. My great grandfather, I think, was a very brave young 20 three year old I think he was to to take the responsibility to bring his younger brother and to go somewhere new during right. the great migration of the world and because of that we have a superb life and lifestyle in South Africa that my Lebanese family don't share at the moment uh, with things that the way things are in Lebanon and I was very aware of that so I I gave honor and I, I weeded and I talked and um, I took many photographs. I think Douglas has the best sunsets in the world and I'm not just making that up. They say it's something about the red sand of the Kalahari, okay. which is right there. They have the most profound sunsets and I just, that was the, those are the two things I wanted to do, photograph, mm and go to the cemetery. And so I did those, and those will be the things I will look at and remember with a smile, you know, as yeah. I grow old and whatever. So it is, it's quite a powerful thing to say goodbye and to leave behind and not to forget, Yeah. because I can never forget. I'm a small town farm girl, no matter what cardboard cutout or how many books or whatever, I remain, a small town Lebanese farm girl. That's who I am. And yeah. I can never forget that. 
And that's what formed me. You know, I stood on the farm and I realized it is here that I worked and saw my dad, not worked so much, but saw my dad sow and wait and reap. Mm. It is here I sat with him in the combine while he was reaping. It is here as a child that I spent my June holidays on the potato fields with the workers, picking up all the baby potatoes, which in those days nobody ate, but my great grand or my grandfather wanted them. So we'd collect all the baby potatoes and clean them, and that's what we had. And and it's there that I learned about food. Yeah. really that you you don't pluck it off a tree you it has to be planted you have to nurture you have to look after and then it grows and then you reap and to me that has been the essence of being a chef is understanding that yeah. you know at one point we had a dairy understanding how milk is produced and the process it goes through but, um, and it's also in that kitchen where, in the old kitchen, where I cooked my first solo meal at seven years old and wow. where I cooked my father's last meal he ever had, mm. you know? So it was quite a poignant end to an era, but I believe that eras do end and you yeah. move on to a new one, so. Do you think that some of this may make it into your next cookbook? And I'm specifically yeah. thinking of, of your potatoes as a logo now, because they seem to be important <laughs> okay. in your life. It was very, my dad was a very prominent potato farmer. So mm -hmm. potatoes were very prominent and it's still something I absolutely love. I can just eat a potato with butter and salt. And then I'm happy. People, I think people underrate potatoes, you know. They they don't give them enough honor because they can be this they can be the highlight of the meal. It's very easy. well in this house we have a moment of silence for potatoes because Paddy is part Irish and part German, so <laughs> I've we've got it from all sides. So when I do cook them, we have a moment of silence and then we eat. We respect <laughs> them. They're wonderful. I mean. I think a potato is the most versatile thing. You can cook it in whichever format. Yeah. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's well, also, I must tell you this funny story. Yeah. My dad was milking um, in my late primary school. He was milking about 250 cows twice a day. So there was vast quantities of milk. And it would come into a stainless steel tank that uh, a water was run around it. Mm -hmm. So it was a double wall tank. Right. And this, um, and inside was a big paddle that kept moving the milk to keep the milk cold. Mm -hmm. And we as children used to run to the dairy and just like open up in this ice cold milk. And it made the best yogurt because it was unpasteurized, unhomogenized, un whatever that we do to our milk lately. And um, one day, me and my wisdom, I thought, you know, we walk to the dairy, we decant the milk, then we walk home and we make Nesquik. Wouldn't it be unbelievable <laughs> to have Nesquik on tap? So my mother used to buy Nesquik in these huge tins because we were on the farm. I knew that I could manipulate my little brother. So I said, listen, dude, I've got a plan for us. So your only decision is, is it pink strawberry or brown chocolate? So he yeah. said chocolate. I said, cool. So we go with this tin. And I've just picked him up. The tin is open and he's about to decant it because I had it all worked out. The paddle would yeah. move and dissolve. And my father walked in and he never hit us, but he did. He looked at me and he said, did I breed donkeys? <laughs> so it was like, what are you thinking? I'm disappointed. Oh, anyway. So, yeah. So you didn't get your my, next I on think, tap. 
No, my entrepreneurial days were squashed for a little bit and then it started again. So I was going to say, so even then you could have figured, all right, we've got vast quantities uh, of Nesquik now. Now I can sell them to my schoolmates. I would have. I would have. I used to sell everything. So, yeah, I'm disappointed, actually. <laughs> let's, come back to your, let's come back to your e-store, if I can, uh, before wrapping up. Because it's always yes. great to talk to you and it's always difficult to say goodbye. Um, I know. From my side anyway. Um, and people probably go, come on, David. <laughs> no, there's so much to talk about. So yes. if people, firstly, how can they, how can they get to your e-store? We haven't, we haven't told them. Yes. So on my website, which is sophialindop.com, which is S-O-P-H-I-A-L-I-N-D-O-P.com. I've got a, a store. I've um, really worked hard at my uh, website to be user-friendly and easy to work. You can book for your cookery classes in all the different venues. You can shop online. Um, behind me, my house looks like a warehouse currently. I've got everything everywhere and I'm the warehouse manager and we pack and we send all. Um, I think the courier guy sleeps outside my door waiting for me the next morning. Right. And um, I've really made it easy, I hope, easy yeah. to navigate and shop and um, get to you. So um, I, I just love it. I love the, the look and feel of it. And I think um, I just hope that people enjoy it as much as I do. And, and I want to thank those who... Oh, I mean, I, I've been supported hugely. I'm deeply grateful. It's something I didn't expect at all. And I've got um, loyal customers that keep coming back and it's winning gifts and this gift oh, and wonderful. that gift. And it's just wonderful for me. It, it's like a big family and I'm very grateful. Very, very grateful. You mentioned cookery classes. Have you started them again or will there be cookery classes in 2022? Yes, absolutely. I'm starting in February and then I'll do one a month um, and also in other venues. I've established a, um, or I've developed a wonderful package in Montague um, where we have a curated Lebanese weekend. So people stay in my friend's guest house. We watch, uh, Montague's got a lovely little vintage um, movie theater. So we watch a Lebanese movie. We cook Lebanese food. We have a wonderful Lebanese um, weekend of eating and hospitality and laughing and enjoyment. Um, so those are going very well as well. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's an amazing journey. And, you know, a lot of people have suffered in COVID. I'm very aware of that. And I'm very grateful that my business has completely evolved and changed and been so good to me and i'm aware of it and grateful and i don't take it for granted just one final question if i may if people mm -hmm. contact you and say look we've looked through your shop we like what you've got but could you perhaps consider doing x whatever the x is a cutting board with a space for a knife in it or you know, something that you may not have thought of or that you just haven't got around to doing. Would you be open to suggestions? Please. <laughs> I keep asking people. I keep saying, if there's anything that you want, I'm an entrepreneur. Right. I want to find a, a need and I want to find a solution. That's so unless it's, it's, it's something I can't do or something that only a few people would be interested in. Obviously, I've got those decisions to make. Right. But I love suggestions. I love, uh, I welcome it. So absolutely. The, um, the contact details for you once more? It's um, sophialindop.com, not .co.za. Okay. And um, yeah, and it's all on there. Everything's okay. on the website. You can contact me. You can WhatsApp me. You can do whatever you want to. So, yes. Before we say goodbye, I just have to go back to, um, to do a bit of housekeeping because yes. that's what pays the bills. So uh, this edition of uh, Series 4 of um, In Conversation with 
is brought to you by Rugged Wear. Real people, real clothing, real solutions. Sophia, as always, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. Um, and I look forward to, to catching up. And I rem seem to remember that last year, somebody drove all the way from Pretoria to attend one of your uh, cooking classes. So save me a space. I think uh, Caro and I might come knocking on your door. I look forward to a day where we have an all-nighter around the table because you and I never have enough time to talk. <laughs> <laughs> My guest on this edition, uh, on this episode of In Conversation with has been Sophia Lindos. As always, an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you, David. And love to Carol. And thank you very, very much. <laughs>